It is a Locked On NFL Thursday show, a divisional round edition of the Locked On NFL Thursday show. You have me, Tyler Rowland. You have my co-host, Alex Clancy. We are going to be talking about all of these playoff matchups and what we think the ideal conference championship games would be. Then we're going to talk about the biggest disappointments from Wild Card Weekend, and we will cap it off talking about the old guard or the young bucks. Who do you trust? All of that on a Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. You are Locked On NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. NFL fans strap in. It is the best weekend of football that we get all year long time for the divisional round. Me and Alex are going to be breaking it down, of course. Again, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, with my other host, Alex Clancy, Locked on Titans, Locked on Cardinals. But we're talking general NFL today. Very excited to dive into all these topics. Before we get into them, I do want to let you guys know that the Locked on NFL Thursday show is brought to you by OnlineGambling.com, the place to be for all the latest gambling news and tips throughout the NFL playoffs. Visit OnlineGambling.com slash NFL to get the edge you need over the competition throughout this year's playoffs. Also, thank you guys for making the Locked On NFL podcast your first listen every day. Alex, our first topic of the show. We are going to talk about what our ideal conference championship matchups will be, and that'll be uh, an easy way for us to kind of discuss the games that we have. Of course, San Francisco will be heading to Green Bay to take on the Packers. The Rams will be heading to Tampa Bay to take Take on the Buccaneers. The Bengals will be heading to Tennessee to take on the Titans. And then the Bills will be heading to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. So, AFC, NFC, Alex, what is your ideal lineup for next week's games? (laughs) Next segment's going to suck for me. This segment's going to suck for you. I think the Cincinnati Bengals are the most intriguing team left, maybe in the NFL, because there's so many question marks around how they can do it if they can do it again. Jamar Chase, sweet mother. Joe Burrow, sweet mother. Like, even without Jamar Chase, this offense is probably top 15, top 17 in the NFL with Joe Mixon. Uh, Samaj P. Ryan's great. The offensive line has played better than people would have expected. T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, uh, like uh, C.J. Uzoma. Like, that offense is absolutely stacked, and you're going to get to team who has Derrick Henry coming back, and different question marks there. Can they do it again? Can Is Ryan Tannehill tested again like he has been? Is he is he uh, uh, playoff tested? Can he win a playoff game? So for me, it's the Bengals and Chiefs because Patrick Mahomes is the best ticket in football still for my money. He just is. We, we're yearning for the next Tom Brady. We're yearning for the next one of those and not the next Aaron Rodgers where it's like, oh, he's the greatest quarterback, but he can't win games when it matters, when it really matters. So I really I want to see those two. And then for me, it's Tommy and Aaron Rodgers just because I want Tom Brady to absolutely just bury Aaron Rodgers. I just want him to just, 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 mm, just, just, mm. You know, and I just want Tom Brady. I want Tom Brady to win 10 Super Bowls. I don't care. It's a video game that we're watching anyways. So those are the two that I want to see. What say you? Well, I actually have to agree with you when it comes to the NFC. I think Aaron Rodgers is, uh, you know, minus Patrick Mahomes. But for most of my life, Aaron Rodgers is the most talented quarterback that I'd ever seen. But Tom Brady is the best quarterback that I've ever seen. And the results speak speak for themselves. So I think, and I got to tell you, growing up, those matchups between Tampa Bay and Green Bay were just awesome. Uh, you know, Warren Sapp against Brett Favre, that defense from Tampa going up against those Packers offenses with Antonio Freeman and Dorsey Levins. I mean, I loved those matchups. So seeing those uh, two teams face off again, I think it would be awesome. And you add in the two quarterbacks, uh, probably the two best quarterbacks that 
that have been playing for the last 10 years total. I can't say ever because, you know, Peyton Manning is in there as well in terms of my lifetime. So Packers-Tampa Bay, I think, is the most intriguing and ideal matchup to give us the best game. On the AFC side, obviously, I'm a guy who not only covers, but follows the Tennessee Titans and have for over 20 years. So uh, my heart is saying I want to see the Titans and I want to see the Bills because I'm tired of the same old, same old. I don't want to see another Tampa Bay, Kansas City uh, Super Bowl, which I think is exactly what would happen if we got the matchups that you just described. Josh Allen is phenomenal. He's great. And if you remember back, The Titans and the Bills played on Monday Night Football, and it was one of the best games of the year. So seeing that rematch, getting Josh Allen on the biggest stage possible, getting the Tennessee Titans, who are a team that maybe aren't pretty, but represent a different way to play football. Are we just going to have four teams that just air it out and throw it down the field all the time? Probably. Probably. (laughs) But, you know, having a little bit of variety on my plate, I don't just need pulled pork smoked sausage, brisket, like where are the green beans? Where is the banana pudding? Can I get a little variety on my plate here? I don't just need three entrees. Give me an app and an entree or something like that. But I'm going to be honest, and I have to be realistic. The more intriguing matchup is what you said, Kansas City versus Cincinnati. We just saw them play, like the Bills and the Titans, an excellent game all the way to the finish. The young quarterback in the AFC who looks like he may be on his way into that top five conversation, The even though Patrick Mahomes is an old, the guy who's kind of been reigning supreme in the AFC as the top quarterback, I think that would set up for a really, really exciting football game, even if it's not the team that I want to see. So a little bit of honesty from me there. But that's our ideal conference championship matchups. We are going to move into a conversation that focuses on the wild card weekend that was and what our biggest disappointments from that weekend was. Alex, uh, go ahead. What the hell are you talking about with banana pudding and green beans as the two sides? Just vacate. Vacate the premises. Those are great barbecue sides. Stop it. (laughs) Stop it. There's got to be a crunch somewhere. It can't just be slop, 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 slop. I mean, you got to have some coleslaw. You got to have something that's, that's, that's crunchtastic. Yeah. Give me some max sales all day. You are. I mean, Alex, I got to throw like our Thanksgiving conversation. (laughs) You, you underrating green beans will be the end of our friendship because that's your favorite thing to make. That's not my fault. The green bean casserole is your go-to. That's not my fault. Well, green beans are delicious, and it's okay to be wrong, Alex. I'm sorry. But (laughs) either way, we are going to move forward to a conversation that I have a feeling Alex will be dominating, and we are going to talk about disappointments from the wild card weekend. Before we get into that, do want to tell you guys a little bit more about our title sponsor, OnlineGambling.com. We're all looking for an edge these days, and I'd like to thank OnlineGambling.com for sponsoring today's podcast. If you don't already know, OnlineGambling.com is a website that's dedicated to giving betters the edge. Throughout the playoffs, they're providing you with the best NFL tips, news, and more to help you make the most informed bets ever. This week, the experts at OnlineGambling.com sent us a challenge, basically, to pick our divisional round upset, an underdog that, in our opinion, could pull off a huge victory. And in my opinion, the answer is San Francisco, who I know that Alex is uh, very fond of, the guys in San Francisco and what they could potentially do to the Packers. So that is going to be our pick for the upset special of the week. If you're thinking about backing an underdog in the divisional rounds, make sure you head to onlinegambling.com before you do. Online gambling gives betters the edge they need by providing the best and most trusted information to help you make the best decision possible before placing your bets. That includes their OG tips section where they basically show you their own underdog picks to give you an inside track on how to beat the odds throughout the NFL playoffs. Make sure you visit onlinegambling.com slash NFL for all the latest gambling news, tips, and info to help you beat the odds and give you the edge that you need throughout the playoffs. Remember, that's onlinegambling.com slash NFL to make the most of this year's playoffs. All right, 
Second segment, Locked on NFL Thursday. Alex Clancy, Locked on Cardinals. Tyler Green Bean Casserole. Roland at Tic Tac Titans. Green Bean Casserole. Green, Tyler Green Bean Casserole. Let's go. I mean, I am hope there's going to be an opening for a host for Locked on NFL Thursday after that one. I am leaving. Thank you for making Locked on NFL your first listen every day. Big announcement. Uh, the Peacock and Williamson NFL Show podcast. They're going on the road for Super Bowl week. Uh, follow the Peacock and Williamson NFL show today to get the most comprehensive coverage of the big game. It's free and available on all platforms. Remember, we don't like paywalls here, so we don't have them. So <laughs> there was, I, I feel like calling Super Wildcard Weekend a crap box of games is pretty fair. I mean, I, I feel like that's not overstating what we watched. There were more blowouts than close games, but we learned exactly what we thought we were going to learn with all of the games that were played, maybe New England being the outlier there, the absolute just Travis Sham mockery that was the defensive output by the by the Patriots. Tyler, I'm going to let you take the lead here. Um, which was the biggest disappointment for you? Um, and you can't say the Cardinals because I'm going to take them um, on a, for Super Wild Card Weekend as as a fan and as somebody that covers the NFL. Yeah, you're fine. I wasn't going to take your card slaw anyway. Uh, yeah, all right. I'm leaving. Sorry, folks. I'm out of here for the day. No, okay. So, like you said, I just want to expand. Uh, the biggest disappointment by far was the weekend in general. We didn't get very many games. I think, I, I don't recall a game, I think there was only like three minutes or three drives total where there was a team in the second half with the ball, with a chance to tie or go ahead. There just wasn't a lot of competitive close games. And when the NFL added that extra seed and they turned it into super wild card weekend, their expectation was that we were going to have the best football weekend ever. It's super wild card weekend, but it's been an absolute disaster, quite frankly. Now, I'm not going to complain about extra games and extra playoff games, but that seventh seed has proved over another other than Indianapolis when they only lost to Buffalo by three points last year, pretty much every other seven seed game has been a disaster. So I think the biggest disappointment of them all is the Super Wild Card weekend in general. It just didn't live up to the hype, and it was unfortunate. I have another specific game to go over, but I'll get into that after I let you say your piece. Well, here's the thing. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a different way. So the Cardinals played like – Absolute malarkey. Cliff Kingsbury should be fired. Listen to Locked On Cardinals. I talk about it every day. I'm not going to do that here. The biggest disappointment was the Chargers didn't make the playoffs. That's what the biggest disappointment is because this is what the setup would have been. The yeah. Chiefs would have played the Raiders, an interdivision rival, even though the Raiders got their the doors flown off them the last time they played uh, uh, the Chiefs. It doesn't matter. Like, Derek Carr, I trust Derek Carr more than Big Ben. And then you would have got Cincinnati and the Chargers. And that's like the first one. Uh, the Chiefs Chargers would have been the best. But the Chargers had had a tie break. If Brandon Staley doesn't call that timeout, and this isn't conspiratorial, they were going to let the clock run out if Brandon Staley didn't call timeout. Okay? If they tie, Big Ben's out, Justin Herbert's in, that's kind of more the balance of what we thought we'd see from the AFC. Right. Don't write off Super Wild Card Regan with the seventh team just because of what you saw last week. Don't do it because teams will level out. It will even out. I mean, with the 49ers uh, Cowboys game was the game of the weekend, and that mm -hmm. in and of itself shows as many teams in the playoffs as possible. Just do it. It's the NFL, it's one game. But I would say the Chargers not being in the playoffs. It was the whole texture for the AFC. It changed everything. So that's probably the yeah. biggest one for me. And the Cardinals played terribly in Cliff Kingsbury and Steve Kimes should be fired. Locked on Cardinals. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, uh, my final disappointment to get into here, uh, taking a look, uh, to me, it was the Patriots. Okay, they couldn't even give a good game. Everybody's hyping up Mac Jones like he's a real Rookie of the Year candidate. The Patriots have this great defense. They play complimentary football. The weather is going to be so cold. The Patriots ran the ball down their throat. Everybody was, and I mean, he already has the crown, but everybody was crowning Bill Belichick saying that was the best game plan we've ever seen. They only threw the ball three times. They ran it down the Bills' throat. And then to come out and put that performance up on Saturday night, despicable. 
quite frankly. That was embarrassing. The Buffalo Bills just gave it to them. And again, we saw two playoff teams, three playoff teams, if we're honest, look like they don't even belong. And I'm not mm -hmm. counting the Cardinals in that. Yeah. I think the Rams played a good – the Cardinals did belong in the playoffs. They did. They just played a terrible game. But Philly, New England – Pittsburgh, they just didn't look anywhere close to the caliber of team that should be playing during the playoffs. I thought the Raiders looked better than all three of those teams. At least the Raiders came out there and gave a good effort. Even in a loss, they had a chance. You know what I mean? So I was incredibly dis disappointed by uh, the performance that the Patriots put out there. And not just because I took them plus four. That, you know, certainly doesn't have anything to do with it, blah, blah, blah. But realistically speaking, I just expected a lot better from a Bill Belichick team to be coached up a lot better, to have a much better plan. They just got waxed off the field, and that was quite the disappointment to me because if that game is a decent game, it can kind of change the feeling of the weekend. So I was most disappointed, I guess, overall in the weekend, but my, my individual game that was a disappointment, definitely Patriots losing to the Bills 47-17. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I think the biggest, and this isn't part of the segment, we're going to move on to a really fun segment in, in just a minute. I think the surprise, like the gold star for the whole wild card weekend, it's not San Francisco, it's not Cincinnati winning their first playoff game in three decades or whatever. It's the Buffalo decided to run the ball. The Devin Singletary was featured against the Patriots, a good run defense. And they decided, you know what? Josh Allen isn't going to throw the ball 50 times. If the, if the Bills want to win, they have to run the ball. And seeing Devin Singletary absolutely ball out, scoring two touchdowns, the Bills 100% are the best offense in football if they can run the ball effectively because nobody's right. going to expect it. Like, that's a that wrinkle of their game they've never needed. Yep. Yeah. And Devin Singletary, like, give the kid the rock. And, and look at what happened. Coming up next, old dogs, young bucks. Are you taking Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady? Or are you taking the field for who's going to win the Super Bowl? Alex Clancy locked on Cardinals. Tyler Rowland locked on Titans. Uh, we're going to talk about that next. First, TurboTax. We are February, March, April. Three months. I use my fingers sometimes. Three months until tax day. Uh, it's better than uh, Green King Castle Rowland. Pick, uh, people think unusual circumstances mean complicated taxes, but for TurboTax Live experts, that's exactly what makes their job interesting. So maybe you you inherited a condo or you're renting it out or maybe you're getting paid in crypto or whatever. You don't know how it's taxed. For TurboTax Live experts, an interesting life can mean an even greater refund. Luckily, TurboTax Live can match you with the right experts who have experience in your unique situations and can answer all your tax questions right from your phone or computer. They can even take care of the whole filing process for you, which sounds super sweet. Whether you launch your own startup or you're working multiple jobs and juggling multiple incomes, an experienced TurboTax Live expert can help you during the entire filing process or do your taxes for you from start to finish to get you the tax deductions you deserve. Visit TurboTax.com to learn more. You do your thing. They've got your taxes. Intuit TurboTax Live. All right, NFL fans, we're going to cap off this Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL podcast with a little bit of fun, as we always do, to end our Thursday show. Do a little uh, old guard versus the young bucks. Before we get into that, do want to remind you guys about the Locked On Bets podcast. We thank you for making the Locked On NFL podcast your first listen every day. But as for that second listen, make sure you check out the Locked On Bets podcast. It's Presented by BetOnline.ag, you get your boy Q, who does the Friday Locked On NFL show. Handicapping expert Lee Sterling, they're giving you daily picks, upset specials, Lee Sterling's lock of the day. Make sure you check out the Locked On Bets podcast. But again, doing a little bit of the old heads versus the young heads here. Alex, why don't you explain to the people what the conversation is going to be? So... We've got some young bucks quarterback wise, you know, Joe Burrow, Ryan Tannehill is kind of in that purgatory of both, but you'd kind of gear him more towards young Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, I mean, that sucks because he's kind of a, uh, the monkey wrench in this plan where he's kind of older, but he's not, you know, pretty much let's do it this way. Let's frame it this way. Do you take Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady? or the field, and the field is including Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Jimmy Garoppolo, every other quarterback, Joe Burrow. Which one do you take? 
the majority of it, because Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady are so much older than everybody else, let's just do it like that, old old Bucks and everybody else. Which side are you taking? Are you taking the field to win the Super Bowl? Or are you taking Tom Brady or uh, Aaron Rodgers? Well, here's the critical factor for me. You look at the field, you know, the the young, or, oh, you know, we're not saying younger, but outside of Rodgers and, and Brady, the clear Hall of Famers already, there's one quarterback in the field that makes me take the field. By far. And it's Ryan Tannehill. Just kidding. Just <laughs> kidding. Just kidding. Cool. Okay, I'm, t- I'm taking the field, man. How can you go against Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes? I mean, one of those guys is going to get to take on one of those old heads probably in the Super Bowl. And I-, I just believe that it's time for the new guard. It's time for Josh Allen. It's time for Patrick Mahomes to reassert himself. Uh, I think that Brady's missing some weapons. I think the Packers, for whatever reason, just can't seem to win the big one, as you have talked about for the entire season, realistically. Uh, So for me, the odds are just too good, and there's so much talent within the field that I got to go with the field. Who's the quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? It's Tom Brady. Until it's not Tom Brady, it's Tom Brady. And this isn't me like, I've loved Tom since he was in Michigan. A really quick sidebar here. They need to retire number 12 in Michigan, even though he didn't wear number 12, right? Like the quarterback now, Chad McNamara, whatever his name is, is wearing number 12 for Michigan. It pisses me off, even though it's irrational. They shouldn't allow anybody to wear number 12 in Michigan, even though he didn't wear that um, when he was there. It's Tom Brady. Until it's not, and especially because even with Chris Godwin out, oh man, uh, even with Chris Godwin out, the number one most important person on the field offensively is Rob Gronkowski, and he's healthy, and he's going to score a lot of touchdowns in the next three games. He's going to score a lot of touchdowns. The easiest bet in the world during the Super Bowl last year, betonline.ag, Rob Gronkowski first touchdown scored, Rob Gronkowski two plus touchdowns. Hit them both, right? okay? Because he is the guy from now on. The second most important is Giovanni Bernard. He's got his James White. And his James White now is bigger, a little bit older, but still the same kind of guy. And he's got Mike Evans, who's probably the most underrated wide receiver in football, not named A.J. Brown. You know? So he's got everything. And the defense is healthy again. It's not fair. They've rope a dope the whole year, and they ended up getting the two seed or whatever seed they're in. Like, it's Tom Brady. It's not even, you can save Aaron Rodgers. It's Tom Brady. Their, their team could be better than they were last year, even with Chris Godwin out. I, I mean, I understand that, but I, I guess I think that when it comes down to it, those wide receivers getting open constantly help Tom Brady, and now Werfs is banged up and Jensen is banged mm-hmm. up. I just think there's a little bit of attrition there that, you know, when Tom Brady has time, he's going to cut you up either way, but I think he's going to have less time. He's got guys who are going to get who are not going to get open as fast, and – if I had to choose between Rodgers or Brady, I'd go with Brady this year, or I'd go with Rodgers this year. Mm-hmm. But again, with Allen, with Mahomes, with Burrow, I mean, even Matt Stafford, the NFL, the NFL is trying so hard or wants so hard. Let's put it this way. The NFL wants the Rams in the Super Bowl so bad, so bad. You can tell. I mean, you can just tell. Even people who work for NFL media make jokes about how they're coerced and the same flowery <laughs> things about the Los Angeles Rams. The the NFL wants to establish the Rams as a key, you know, pillar franchise for them in LA, but they just want that so so bad. So, with that in my mind, there's just no way that I can uh I can go with the two old dogs. I got to go with with the young bucks and the field. But uh I think that's going to do it for us today, Alex. We talked about um, you know, the ideal matchups that we want to see in the championship weekend talked about some of the disappointments in super wild card weekend went over the young bucks against the old dogs. So I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. I hope we get some great football games this weekend as well, but that's going to do it for me. Tyler Rowland, host of locked on Titans, my co-host Alex Clancy host of locked on Cardinals. Make sure you guys check out the locked on NFL Friday show. Subscribe on whatever platform you do stream. As Alex always likes to say, you're never going to have to pay for a locked on podcast. We don't believe in paywalls here, but that's going to do it for us today. You guys enjoy your weekend and uh, we will see you next Thursday.